In 1974, the Sugarland Express hit the big screen, setting the stage for a roller coaster of emotions. No need for fancy words or convoluted descriptions, this film is a straightforward journey. What makes it stand the test of time? What enduring qualities turn it into a symbol of the industry? Buckle up, because there's a lot to uncover funny, shocking, and downright sad facts that will keep you glued to the screen. So, what gives this movie its everlasting charm? Well, that's a question worth pondering. As you watch, you'll find yourself immersed in a tale that transcends the years. But enough about that. Let's dive into the heart of the Sugarland Express, where the plot takes unexpected turns, leaving you guessing until the very end. And here's a heads up, there are moments that will make you laugh out loud, scenes that will shock you, and others that might bring a tear to your eye. It's the kind of cinematic experience that leaves an indelible mark, making you wonder about the enduring qualities that secure its place in the industry's history. Now, as you enjoy the ride, think about your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this film. We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Share the laughter, the shocks, and the tears because that's what makes the Sugarland Express more than just a movie. Stay tuned for more, and remember there's always more to discover in the world of cinema. What enduring qualities do you think make this movie an everlasting symbol of the industry? Steven Spielberg's debut cinema film, The Sugarland Express, marked a significant step in his career following his earlier television film Duel. Released in 1974, it showcased the cinematographic brilliance of Vilmos Zygmunt, evident in the stunning sunset shots characteristic of that era. The narrative unfolds as Lou Jean Sparrow Poplin orchestrates the escape of her husband Clovis from a minimum security prison. Their motive to reclaim their child, who had been taken away, and face the prospect of adoption. The film explores the ensuing chaos as the couple, now accompanied by kidnapped police officer Maxwell Slide, embarks on a wild journey. The storyline, part tragicomedy and part road movie with intense car collisions, introduces viewers to characters whose actions elicit mixed emotions. Lou Jean's seemingly foolish decisions raise concerns about the safety of her husband, even drawing criticism from a fellow inmate. Goldie Hawn delivers a compelling performance as the vexing Lou Jean, while William Atherton shines in his portrayal of the imprisoned Clovis. Unfortunately, aside from Ben Johnson, the male actors playing law enforcement officers come across as rather bland. Despite the commendable technical achievements by Spielberg, the script falls short, leaving room for improvement. In contrast, another perspective views the Sugarland Express as a forgotten gem in Spielberg's filmography. The plot revolves around 25-year-old Clovis Michael Poplin, played by William Atherton, who finds himself in prison just before his scheduled release. His wife, Lou Jean, convinces him to escape, driven by the desire to retrieve their child, baby Langston, from foster parents. The narrative takes an unexpected turn when the couple kidnaps patrolman Maxwell Slide, triggering a nationwide police pursuit. Spielberg's early work is praised for its flawless execution, with Atherton and Hahn delivering brilliant performances. Michael Sachs impresses as the sympathetic policeman, and Ben Johnson's portrayal of Captain Harlan Tanner adds depth to the story. The film's emotional impact stems from the audience's growing attachment to the main characters, despite the events being loosely based on true incidents from 1969. In conclusion, while the Sugarland Express showcases Spielberg's early directorial prowess, it is not without its flaws. The technical achievements and performances by certain cast members stand out, but the overall narrative could benefit from a more refined script. In tackling the challenge of melding Goldie Hawn and William Atherton's acting styles for the Sugarland Express, Steven Spielberg strategized. Atherton, honing his craft on stage, improved with each take, while Hahn excelled in the initial attempts. Spielberg opted for Hahn's close-ups first, then transitioned to Atherton's until Hahn found her stride, maximizing efficiency. Setting up highway scenes proved time-consuming, requiring 90 minutes per setup. The highway patrol's task involved halting or redirecting traffic within a two-mile radius. Post-shot, film cars retraced to the starting point, causing frustration among waiting drivers delayed by the process. A cinematic milestone, the Sugarland Express pioneers the tracking shot from front seat to back and a 360-degree pan inside a car with accompanying dialogue, showcasing Spielberg's innovation in storytelling techniques. In summary, Spielberg navigated the acting dynamics and logistical challenges to shape the Sugarland Express, 
leaving an indelible mark on cinematic history. In the vast, flat Texas landscape, Steven Spielberg faced a cinematographic challenge for his directional debut, strategically positioning his camera above the road to capture more than seven or eight cars within the frame. The use of a long lens became essential to overcome the expansive emptiness of the surroundings. This marked Spielberg's first feature film to receive a widespread release, a significant step in his career. Unlike his earlier work, Firelight, which saw limited exposure, The Sugarland Express reached a broader audience, establishing Spielberg as a director with mainstream appeal. The film features a hijacked Texas Department of Public Safety Patrol car, a 1973 Dodge Polara, personally acquired by Spielberg post-filming, complete with bullet holes. This tangible piece of the movie became a unique souvenir for the director, showcasing his direct involvement in the production. In navigating the challenges of the Texan terrain and cinematic logistics, Spielberg's innovative approach shines through in the Sugarland Express. The director's use of unconventional camera angles and his hands-on involvement with film elements contribute to the movie's distinctive character, leaving an impact on cinematic history. Set against the vast Texas landscape, the Sugarland Express, partially filmed in Sugarland, Texas, presents a unique cinematic challenge met by Spielberg. The director strategically positions the camera, capturing the essence of multiple Texas locations like San Antonio, Live Oak, Floresville, Pleasanton, Converse, and Del Rio. The prison pre-release center featured in the film is an authentic facility near Sugar Land, Texas. Universal executives initially praised the film's rough cut, but a San Jose preview with Paper Moon altered perceptions. Audiences embraced Goldie Hawn's comedic moments in the first act, only to be startled by the film's shift to a more serious tone, prompting varied emotional responses. The unexpected sharpshooter element left some viewers in tears while others expressed anger. As a pivotal point in Spielberg's career, the Sugarland Express gained a widespread release, distinguishing it from his earlier, more limited exposure work like Firelight. Notably, Spielberg's hands-on involvement extended beyond directing, evidenced by his personal acquisition of a 1973 Dodge Polara, a film car riddled with bullet holes. In overcoming logistical challenges, Spielberg's innovative approach shines through, creating a distinctive cinematic piece that resonates in history. The director's adept navigation of the Texan terrain and incorporation of real locations contribute to the film's authenticity, leaving an impact on cinematic history. In summary, The Sugarland Express, a milestone in Spielberg's career, intertwines captivating storytelling with the unique backdrop of Texas, creating a memorable cinematic experience. In the span of a few brief hours, the events depicted in the film unfolded despite the narrative spanning multiple days. Steven Spielberg, adopting a pragmatic approach, utilized a six-foot scale model of the used car lot meticulously crafted by the art department. This enabled him to plan and execute shots economically, especially in the sequence set in the car lot. Spielberg's decision to shoot the film in continuity proved strategic. By doing so, he effectively managed production costs and facilitated character development for the actors. As the entourage following the protagonists grew steadily throughout the film, shooting in sequence provided a controlled way to navigate the evolving dynamics within the storyline. To address the challenges of the used car lot sequence, Spielberg's foresight in pre-planning with the scale model played a crucial role. The film's seamless continuity and economic execution underscore Spielberg's practical approach to filmmaking, contributing to the overall coherence of the narrative. In summary, the rapid unfolding of events, the economical use of a scale model, and shooting in continuity exemplify Steven Spielberg's pragmatic filmmaking approach in the Sugarland Express, demonstrating his commitment to efficiency and storytelling cohesion. In the Sugarland Express, the average shot length stands at a concise seven seconds, reflecting Steven Spielberg's calculated approach to visual storytelling. The film's pacing remains brisk, maintaining audience engagement through efficient scene transitions. For the film's score, Spielberg enlisted John Williams, drawn to his previous works on The Reivers and The Cowboys. 
Originally envisioning a symphonic composition, Spielberg yielded to Williams' insight, resulting in a sparser score dominated by solo harmonica and restrained strings. Panavision's introduction of the Panaflex found its showcase in the Sugarland Express, revolutionizing filmmaking by enabling Spielberg to execute intricate shots within the confines of a patrol car. This innovation underscores Spielberg's commitment to pushing cinematic boundaries. In summary, the Sugarland Express stands as a testament to Spielberg's meticulous craftsmanship, evident in the calculated shot lengths, the strategic musical direction by John Williams, and the groundbreaking use of Panaflex technology, showcasing Spielberg's knack for pushing the cinematic envelope.